Jesus is Lord of all? Oh, he is not Lord at all. Mm. You know, family, this is a reminder for some, but we may be watching today. You may be a guest, or you may be watching for the first time via the internet, and you may ask yourself, you know, why is it that CCC seems to be so politically engaged? Well, first and foremost, it's because we've taken stewardship responsibility over the city of New York. It's because we heard the call of Jesus to be light and salt in this world. It's because we remember that we have responsibilities here to be good stewards over our spirit, over our soul, over our bodies, and CCC is a church that votes. Amen? It's just a reminder because we don't come to church to escape from the world. We come to be equipped to engage. Hallelujah. After all, we have the power of God, the gospel, of salvation. Amen. And so today I want to introduce you to Leisha Eve, who is running for New York Attorney General. Born and reared in Buffalo, New York, and currently a resident of Harlem, a graduate of Harvard Law School, clerk for the New York State Court of Appeals, litigator in Washington, D.C., counsel to Joe Biden and Hillary Clinton, and chief economic development advisor to Governor Andrew Cuomo. Leisha Eve has worked at the highest levels of both state and federal government and has spent her legal career advancing the rights of women, defending the disenfranchised, and ensuring educational and economic opportunities for all. So let's give a warm Christian Cultural Center welcome to Leisha Eve. Good morning, good morning, and thank you, Minister Onario. Grace and peace to all of you here and watching uh, CCC. I want to give my blessings, many blessings, and my thanks to Reverend Dr. A.R. Bernard and Pastor Karen Bernard. I also want to give a special thanks to Keith, to Keith White. Uh, who made arrangements for me to be here after I met Pastor. I was here actually a couple of months ago. I didn't speak, but I came with my friend Missy Cisco because I wanted to have the fellowship, the worship experience. And I was so powerfully moved, and I met with Reverend Dr. Bernard after that, and I am so humbled and so grateful that he invited me back to speak about my candidacy to be the next Attorney General of our great state. Today, thank you, today is the International Day of Prayer, and it is Women's Equality Day. We are not yet equal, but we will celebrate trying to get there. We have so much to do for our state and our nation to be just for everyone, whether you've been here 100 years or whether you just arrived. And we all have experiences with that. My paternal grandfather was born in Puerto Plata, Dominican Republic, and came to Florida, and then ultimately the Bronx, and my father, 85 years ago, was born in Harlem. I have relatives who hail from the islands of the Bahamas, who now call our great state, our nation home. This has been a place of opportunity, but we still have so much more work to do, but the work that we have done, the work that we have done, that our predecessors fought so hard to achieve the civil rights, the voting rights, the equal rights. There's a man named Donald Trump right now who is trying to roll all of that back. Now more than ever, we need an attorney general to stand up to protect, defend, and empower New Yorkers, and I am that woman. As was mentioned, I'm born and reared in Buffalo. I am a child of God, and I'm the daughter of two of the greatest public servants I will ever know. My father, Arthur Eve, 51 years ago, founded the EOP and the HEOP program, through which more than 100,000 of our black and brown have gone on to college who otherwise might not have been able to go. My mother was a teacher, and after teaching for 33 years, founded what became the largest and most comprehensive alternatives to incarceration for women in the state of New York and in the state's history. I have more litigation experience in courtrooms across the state than any other, and in the 28 years that I've been a lawyer, the case that I'm most proud of is a case where I represented hundreds of women 
all women incarcerated in District of Columbia prisons against the District of Columbia because of prison conditions they were living in. One of my clients had her legs shackled to a hospital bed when she brought a child into this world. As horrific as that is, I am so proud to stand before you and say that I stayed the course we say the course that we got precedent setting relief for hundreds of women incarcerated in our nation's prisons that serves the test of time to this day. I was barely 30 years old. I was 29 years old when I handled that case. I am 54 today. That gives you, that gives you a glimpse of the kind of attorney general I will be given that that was how I was as what we call a baby lawyer. Yes, I was proud to serve as counsel to Joe Biden, pushing for immigrant rights, helping him implement the Violence Against Women Act, helping survivors of domestic violence and physical assault across the country. Proud to serve as the first Homeland Security Advisor and counsel to the Honorable Hillary Rodham Clinton for four and a half years. And yes, the first woman and the first person of color to be the Chief Economic Development Advisor to a governor of our state in the state's history, overseeing 11 agencies in state government, when I left the governor's office a few years ago, we know how this works. They gave my job to two different people, but I took care of business overseeing all 11 agencies in state government. And now I stand before you as the first black woman to be a commissioner of the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey. I say all this to say because now more than ever, we need someone in the attorney general's office, the people's lawyer, who is best prepared to deal with the assault on our rights from Donald Trump, but is also best prepared to deal with the challenges we have at home. We own the fact that we have a criminal justice system that is not fair. We own the fact that we have bad voting laws. We own the fact that all of our children do not have the kind of educational opportunity that I had in a good public school. I am best prepared to help us deal with those challenges and to help make our state and our nation better than it has ever been. Let me close by mentioning two great women that I know we all know, Sojourner Truth and Harriet Tubman. Yes. Harriet Tubman, I was at her home in Auburn, New York, just a couple of days ago when I was a lawyer in Western New York. I actually represented 20 years ago Harriet Tubman Home, Inc., which has now done so much great work to pay tribute to this great American, a black woman who spent so much time and so much effort bringing so many people who were enslaved to freedom. Sojourner Truth, born into slavery in New York, was another hidden figure in American history. But she is hidden no more because as counsel to Hillary Clinton, I drafted the legislation. And because of that, we now have a bust of Sojourner Truth in the nation's capital, the first black woman in our history to be acknowledged in the nation's capital. <laughs> hidden no more, hidden no more. We have to use these extraordinary women and so many other women we know, Shirley Chisholm, Barbara Jordan, to keep doing what they did, which is to never give up. Because justice denied for one of us is justice denied for all of us. I ask you to keep me in your prayers. And I ask with great humility and much respect that you believe in me, that you believe in Eve, and support me to be your next Attorney General. I will not let you down. Thank you so much.